Between a horse carrying one person and a horse pulling a cart with a heavy load, which is more likely to run faster? Which horse is more capable of covering more ground and making more progress in the shortest time? You probably guessed by now. Of course, the horse carrying just one person is the horse that's more likely to run faster. This is because such a horse isn't burdened by a heavy load. Carrying unnecessary and unhelpful loads that deter our progress is not a healthy way to live a fulfilling life, and in order to enjoy God's manifold blessings, we have to let go of those things which prevent us from moving forward in a progressive fashion and put ourselves in a perfect posture to receive blessings from God. There are a number of wonderful promises which God has assured us of, and we must make sure that we have unhindered access to them at all times in our lives. It's God's will that we live graciously in good health and in prosperity, and we have to make sure that we don't hold on to those things that prevent the manifestation of God's promises and blessings towards us. What things are we to let go of in order for us to receive the blessings of God? What shackles weigh us down and prevent us from enjoying the proceeds of God's goodness? Here are five things we must do away with in order to receive God's blessings. Addictions The state of being addicted is an inclination or devotion towards negative habits and influences that have harmful consequences. Addictions involve bad practices that damage, jeopardize, or shorten the life of a person who constantly indulges in such negative practices, and it's something that a person must let go of in order to easily receive the blessings of God. Addictions are things of the flesh that are carnal and unfruitful, and Galatians 5.17 makes us understand that the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit is against the flesh. These being contrary to one another, there can be no coexistence as a contention forms. This prevents a person from living in a manner that's expected, and such a person has to let go of the lusts or addictions in order to be able to partake wholesomely in the manifold blessings of God. Galatians 5, 19-20 shows us examples of addictions which restrict the flow of God's blessings, and they include adultery, fornication, uncleanness, pornography, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, murders, drunkenness, which is the misuse of alcohol, and reveling. The practice of these vices is potent to sweep one away from the blessings of God. Not necessarily is it that the blessings slip away, but that the kind of person who's addicted slips away from the blessings. A person that's addicted is not in control and is most likely carried away by distractions, and this prevents God's blessings. Let's take King Solomon as an example. Although he was endowed with uncommon wisdom, as well as riches from God, he had a very big flaw which contributed to his downward spiral and that of Israel. His focus was shifted, and his heart was turned away from God by the numerous women which he either married or harbored. King Solomon failed to let go of his lust for women, and it prevented him from fully enjoying that which God kept in store for him. We must strive to live free of addictions of any kind. Bitterness and Strife A person that is bitter and always inclined to strife has to immediately transform towards positive change as those traits which are indeed negative usually go a long way in preventing God's blessings. Being bitter limits our joy and freedom, even as it reflects in our lives and in our relationships with other people in our environment. One must watch so as to not become bitter or inclined to strife and conflict, as it leads to a dent in our image and makes us somewhat insensitive to the plight of others. If you're going through a problem, bitterness won't solve it. We have to let go of bitterness and strife in order for us to fully enjoy God's blessings. Ephesians 4.31 tells us to let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking with all malice be put away from us, as this is how we benefit from the riches and wealth of God's blessings. Envy and Hatred Envy refers to the resentful desire of something which another person or other person possesses, not necessarily material things, which breeds hatred, ill feelings, and enmity. Having feelings of displeasure and hatred towards people or someone for their good fortune is negative conduct, which isn't expected of a sound Christian believer, and such is capable of diverting a person away from the blessings of God. Having hatred or being envious never ends well in the long run, as an obsession with other people's wealth or good fortune prevents us from having a recognition of and being content with such good fortunes which he or she has. 
Envy and hatred also makes a person channel an amount of effort and focus away from achieving and sustaining his or her own good fortunes, as such a person's attention is shifted towards the good fortunes of others. A prime example of this in the Bible is King Saul. King Saul, who was the first king of Israel, was envious of David, who seemed to have more victories over the enemies of Israel when compared to King Saul. This led to a pursuit to kill David, a wild goose chase, which eventually led to the sour demise of King Saul and his son Jonathan, who was the best friend of David. If King Saul's attention and efforts were channeled more into making himself and his kingdom better, he would have recognized that he and his kingdom actually enjoyed huge benefits from David's victories in war. David would have been a mighty spear in the hand of King Saul to crush his enemies, but King Saul failed to realize that David, in his might, was only diligently serving the king, the kingdom of Israel and God. King Saul shot himself in the foot by seeking to kill David and paid dearly for it. To receive God's blessings, we must let go of hatred and envy. Fear and Anxiety False expectations appearing real is what some define fear to be. A throwing oneself into a state of worry and despair is what anxiety is all about. Fear and anxiety are things to let go of, as they only reinforce unbelief which hinders us from the blessings of God. We must conquer fear and anxiety in order to receive God's blessings. In Joshua 1.9, God reminds Joshua of his commandment to him to be strong and of good courage. He tells Joshua not to be afraid or dismayed. God reassured Joshua that he was with him wherever he goes and in whatever he does. This applies to us as well. God is always with us, and we must not be afraid or dismayed. We must shun fear and anxiety while we fully trust God, and this is how we partake of His gracious blessings. Pride Pride comes before the fall. As cliché as that is, a lot of Christians have become inflated with pride. Many have become pompous and arrogant, especially when they seem to have hit a milestone or when they've become successful. Some forget that there's always more to receive and more to achieve, and that pride only prevents one from seeing beyond their nose. The chief master of pride is the devil, and we can see that from his fall from glory into darkness. Lucifer became so inflated with pride over God's given splendor that he became corrupt, violent, and no longer willing to serve God's purpose. As a result, he was demoted and reduced. As children of God, we have to stay humble at all times in order to continually enjoy the blessings of God. We must let go of pride which comes before the fall. As children of God who seek to constantly partake of God's blessings, we must totally let go of the five things mentioned above and ensure to walk according to the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. We must not be desirous of vainglory. We must not provoke our fellows, and we must not envy people around us who have or seem to be of good fortune. We must unburden ourselves of these unnecessary heavy loads that reduce our peace and get us nowhere. In order to move progressively forward, we have to sincerely do away with carnality and preserve our souls as this opens us up to the manifold and rich blessings of God. We are graced, we are empowered, and this is what we must believe. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for giving us the opportunity to live and exist in this world. We pray that you grant us strength to let go of the things that do not allow for your blessings to reach us. Give us understanding and enlarge our hearts to receive your blessings. In Jesus' name, amen.